So this one is going to be a little different than my usual blank representation deserves better videos because we're discussing a group that I have no right in dictating on what's considered good or bad rep for them because I'm cis and I identify with my assigned sex at birth. So who the fuck am I to say what's good or bad non-binary representation in animation? At most, I'll share my own observations, but you largely will be hearing from non-binary folks. As you should. As we should. As I should. As we all should. So as always, I encourage y'all, keep an open mind. You might just learn something. I know I have. You see, I always thought that it was dehumanizing to portray non-binary people as literal other beings. As if the notion of breaking from gender norms and the binary itself is such an alien concept that it's inhuman or something. In fact, I find it very ironic that most robot characters are considered non-binary, even though their coding is literally binary! How the fresh fuck does that make any sense? And even the most iconic non-binary characters in animation, and in media in general, kind of feels like they were given the label as an easy cop-out, or needed explaining as to why they would be non-binary. Instead of, you know, just existing for the sake of existing, like the cis characters can. I don't like the double standard. The best example of this is definitely Stevani in the Gems and Steven Universe. First off, I still think this show's backward use of metaphors is what hurts the case of fusions the most, especially for Stevani. Because just like I said in the lesbian video about Garnet, who exactly is Stevani outside the realm of being the personification of Steven and Connie's relationship? Steven Universe wants to portray fusions as if they're their own person, but really they're just walking relationship statuses. Also, Stevani being intersex makes perfect sense because they are literally a combination of a cis male and a cis female. And as for the gems, we've been through this, they are literally space rocks. They don't have any concept of gender and sex. So with that logic, they all can be non-binary and use whatever pronouns they want. Honestly, using aliens is just as lazy as using robots. And yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you, Bimo. Such an adorable little buddy with charisma, imagination, and is also non-binary. Why? Oh, because Bimo is a robot. Again, a creature with zero concept of gender and sex. It's like portraying autistic people as robots. It just further alienates one's identity as a cold, lifeless machine. Which is not fair. I am a cold, lifeless tiger person. I I'm sticking to the bit. At least with Double Trouble, they're given human attributes. But alas, they are a shapeshifter. Yet another easy cop-out in need of an explanation of their non-binary-ness. Is that a word? I'm rolling with it. And... <laughs> And as much as I love him with all my heart, Discord fam, you know, Loki fits that category as well. It's been canon for years that he's gender fluid. But again, a character with the ability to shift their sex and gender appearance with such ease, being gender fluid makes a ton of sense and feels like another explanation. Honestly, I don't understand why characters need to have these conditions or even be different species with powers that so easily explains why they're non-binary in the first place. Why can't they just be non-binary without all the bells and whistles to justify it? Characters like Asher, Angel Jose, Pool String, the Mer Kid, and Shep from Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beasts, Craig of the Creek, and even Steven Universe were capable of portraying non-binary characters with such ease. Even the Owl House just introduced a non-binary witch. Not exactly human, but also not a robot, so there's progress. Sadly, those golden gems don't get as much screen time and are either one-offs or ensemble characters in the background. But you do see that it doesn't have to be so convoluted when it comes to non-binary characters. This is just some stuff I've noticed and wanted to speak on, but then again, this is an identity that I do not hold and therefore the representation is not for me. I don't know, maybe some non-binary folks don't mind it or some of them do have a major issue with it. So let's hear what they have to say. So Artrice wanted me to talk about my favorite non-binary character, Media, and if you know me, you'll know that I'm a big fan of Sega Atlas and their various IPs. One of these IPs is Knights, a niche series of games about a titular character who helps kids with their real-life problems via journeying into their dreams. Knights as a series has spanned only two games, those being 1996's Knights in the Dreams, released for the Sega Saturn, and 2007's Knights Journey of Dreams, released on the Nintendo Wii. 
Knights as a character has also appeared in several crossover games such as Sega All-Stars Racing, Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, and Sega Superstar Tennis. Yep, a lot of sports shit. Anyway, Knights herself is a non-binary character, as confirmed by Yuji Naka himself when asked about the fact that Knights is called by all pronouns throughout the series. The main reason I love Knights is that they're overly feminine, but are still non-binary, which is so nice considering the harmful stereotypes cis people have about non-binary people. Strap in, folks, because I'm about to go on my soapbox for a second. So there's this misconception from people within the gender binary that non-binary people are, are all these androgynous uwu people who all wear oversized hoodies and are named dumb shit like sock or some crap. A misconception that has now turned into what I believe to be a harmful stereotype. The whole point behind being non-binary is that you don't identify with the binary way of gender expression. You aren't a man or a woman, sure, but that doesn't mean someone is androgynous just because they don't identify within the gender binary. Non-binary people can be masculine presenting, non-binary people can be feminine presenting. By creating a made-up third binary, cis people end up missing the point of why people identify as non-binary. The reason Knights is a favorite of mine in terms of non-binary characters is because of how I see myself in her. For context, for you who might not know me, I am a she-they non-binary who presents overly femininely with my gender expression. I like to wear more girly clothes like cute skirts, tight jeans, crop tops, stuff like that. I go by both she, her, and they, them pronouns. I have longer hair and prefer to be clean shaven and even have been training my voice to sound higher pitched and girlier, as you can probably hear. But I'm still non-binary in my identity. Many cis people have told me before, well, you don't act non-binary. And it's really irritating to regularly be told by people who aren't like me trying to tell me what I should be like. Knights, like myself, doesn't follow these restrictions cis people put on the non-binary population. Knights being non-binary, but also super girly, helped me better understand that I didn't have to follow these made-up rules cis people made for my identity. That there isn't a right way to act non-binary. Knights reminds me why a lot of people want good representation in media. Because it allows us to feel seen by the world around us. I feel seen because people like Naoto Oshina and Yuji Naka created a feminine presenting non-binary protagonist like Knights that I can see myself in. Being non-binary is just being yourself. It's like how men and women don't all act away because of their genders. People aren't stereotypes. People are complicated and thus you shouldn't be surprised that non-binary people aren't some monolith for you to stick your fucking restrictions and rules onto. Anyway, that's all from me. Go play Nights in the Dreams, it's literally like $8 on Steam, and it goes on sale regularly. Sorry for preaching for most of my segments. <laughs> hey, I'm Offbeat Kiki. I'm a content creator, artist, and musician who loves to talk about nostalgic media, social issues, and the joy and pain of our collective existence. And I'm non-binary. I try to nurture my inner child's interests while viewing them under the lens of modern adulthood. One of the topics that I'm aware of when intaking nostalgic media is the way queer people are represented. So I'm not caught up on all the modern cartoons. The main non-binary representation I've seen is Lake from Infinity Train, which I think was handled decently via metaphor. I'm not going to pretend like I know all the modern trans characters in cartoons, but something I have noticed in a more general sense is LGBTQIA characters often feel tokenized or shoehorned in for the sake of surface level representation, checking a box type shit. I honestly feel like that's something that can happen in real life too, so I want to suggest a couple ideas for non-binary representation. Number one. We need more human non-binary characters. A lot of non-binary or trans characters in cartoons are straight up not human. Whether they're robots or ghosts, I have noticed this with characters who sit outside the binary. I feel like this can get too easily applied to agender characters in particular. It's great and totally valid that this robot character doesn't identify with a binary gender, but what I really want to see is a human person who doesn't. As a non-binary person, it's not the best feeling to look at that insider LGBTQIA cartoons database and see that most of the non-binary characters are mythical, fantastical beings. I think furthering that idea promotes infantilization and tokenization of those who identify this way. Number two, non-binary is not a third gender with specific characteristics. There is no certain way to present as non-binary. Lake from Infinity Train was a great character, but also had a shaved head and a feminine voice. So that's a decent example of fitting the mold of androgyny that non-binary people are often generalized into. 
There are non-binary people that look like Lake, but there are also non-binary people who like to look ultra-feminine or ultra-masculine or who reject the idea of gender being applied to them at all. Number three, non-binary and trans characters are more than their gender. In my experience as a non-binary person who's been out in some capacity for six or seven years now, once I was out of that initial phase of self-discovery and understanding my own identity, being non-binary wasn't really at the forefront of my personality or anything. I still think about it, and it affects the way I experience my life, but it's not the entirety of who I am. It's just a piece of the Kiki puzzle. So I want to see more stories where characters just are non-binary or trans already when we meet them, and they don't have to out themselves or explain their identity to anybody, and we don't have to see their coming out story or know their dead name or what they looked like before they came out. Just a human being who happens to be non-binary, who is a participant in a story that is not about their identity. Is that so hard to ask? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a gender fluid alien in the next big cartoon. That sounds awesome, but so does seeing someone like me on the screen. You can find me at Offbeat Kiki on YouTube and social media. Thanks for having me, Artis. So when I'm watching a piece of media, I see a lot of problems that tend to crop up when writing non-binary characters. I think one of the biggest issues is that writers have this urge to explain everything and not everything needs some sort of grand explanation or meaning behind it. Uh, robot shapeshifters, aliens are obvious contenders for non-binary rep because, well, I mean, it's for obvious reasons. For the, uh, for the shapeshifters, if you can change your entire physiology, of course you're going to have an unconventional idea of gender and, for that matter, your sexuality. Um, and a similar thing can be said for aliens and robots who just aren't constrained by our cultural ideas of what a body is and should be. And that's fair. Although, to write off this sort of examples of representation as easy, you have to keep in mind just how easy and frankly thoughtless it is to make aliens just reflect cisgender status quo. I mean, that's how it's been done for years. And so while I don't call it lazy writing, I do see how limiting it can be. Uh, Non-binary folks exist out there and we're not sexless robots or confused eccentric aliens. Um, sometimes non-binary rep feels like when Disney keeps having their first gay character pushed off to the side, written in such a way that the cishets aren't too uncomfortable. Um, I remember as a kid feeling very attached, particularly attached to the sort of princely girl type in anime. Uh, to be honest, when I got older, I just chalked it up to gay and moved on. Um, but I think it may be more than that. Though personally for me, I think a character like Bimo was the first time I noticed a deliberate sort of distance, difference from the norm. Actively hearing a change in pronouns really does make a world of difference. Hello everybody, the name's Ren, or Kyren, as most folks know. Um... I go by they, them, and fey fair pronouns, and I'm here all because of this beautiful person named Artrice. Thank you for sharing your platform, love, and I'm here to go off on all the non-human representation we have for non-binary people, since media is very obsessed with just basing us as non-human because apparently existing outside of the binary means that we're just zeros and ones. We don't really deserve like a very humane form. For example, Bimo, as showcased in the thumbnail, because it's pretty obvious that he's a very good example of a binary person where it's like, zero one, zero one, I'm a little game boy. <laughs> and no hate to any people that use he, they pronouns, but it's just like, we deserve much better. And there was also Double Trouble, and I don't even know where to begin with Double Trouble, because I really loved their character at first, and then later on as the series progressed, I was just shocked at how manipulative and, like, practically insane they were. Not necessarily insane, like, for a better term, but, like, very determined to manipulate people and that kind of just struck a chord with me and i don't know why because like sure double trouble is supposed to be like the villain later on not so much but i've seen so many fans 
just do so much of a better job in their fan fictions and such. And I am just shocked at the writers and such because they pride themselves in being an all women writer cast, but there should also they could have at least had like a guest person to join and be and become their non binary like representation person, I guess. And then there was Shep from Steven Universe, which I believe is one of the most most wholesome and beautiful like representation media right now, at least in cartoons. Because um I think they're they're very supporting and they're absolutely amazing. So um I remember hearing about the very first non binary like live action character and they were in like some sort of bank show. Okay, so basically they were a very femme representing person and they put her in a suit and then they shaved her they shaved their head and then they became like some sort of like person that shows up at the bank and is like a very important evil character, I suppose. And I thought that was very interesting. Um my personal feelings with like all the current non binary like representation. It's at like a standstill where it's like, I appreciate this, but sh we should work much harder to give people the proper representation they deserve. Because, um, I don't know, for me personally, I feel like Loki is very gender non-conforming. Like, for my, for my personal uh, perspective, because I think they're really cool. And I really have been enjoying the show, and not just because our tree suggested it, um... <laughs> Um, yeah, I've always sensed, like, a strong, like, gender non-forming, like, vibe from Loki. And I think that's wonderful, and I really, really hope that there's more diverse, deep, loving, and full representation in the future. Because we don't deserve just the non-human characters, we very much deserve the protagonist, the, um, the rival, anything very, anything very impactful, we deserve. As more people realize how important non-binary representation is, I learn even more through all sorts of different media forms. There's a lot of non-binary models and actors, and recently I've been obsessed with this non-binary band called Glass Beach. Their entire dis discography just screams non-binary, and I respect it and love it so much. And I'm so excited for cartoon and animators to finally be able to realize how important non-binary representation is. And the fact that Kirby's also non-binary makes me a little bit happy. <laughs> because it's shown that Kirby always used they-them pronouns in Japan. And when they came to the US, they didn't use they-them pronouns anymore for, for some awful reason. And I made them in Smash, so everything's alright. <laughs> But yeah, as a non-binary person, I always do my best to like not fall into stereotypes. But it's kind of comforting to be like, oh, I'm non-binary and I like this. And so many other non-binary people come in and they're like, yeah, we agree, we like this too, but we don't want it to be a stereotype. But we acknowledge that we all like this. Um, like frogs and like <laughs> um, mother mother, like all sorts of things. And I find it so reassuring no matter what, it's a very comforting, gentle, like, community, because even though we're associated with a lot of violent things, it's, like, it's what makes our community very unique and beautiful, and I have so much love for everyone who appreciates and respects me. So, yeah, thank you so much, Artrice, for having me. Yeah, I hope that everyone else is having a good day. Thank you. Non-binary representation is ultimately important, but it's also something that I feel hasn't advanced enough. I'm going to be focusing on characters I'm familiar with from my own unique perspective. I'm a sign male at birth, demi-boy, and I can't really start off anything other than Steven Universe just because I'm attached to it so much. Steven Universe is flawed, and that's okay. But I don't like how many instances of talking about the show you have to state that in advance, but that's another story. The key thing to focus on today is that it's created by a non-binary person, Rebecca Sugar. However, I remember my early fandom days, people were instantly asking where the male gems are and basically just why everyone's a quote-unquote woman. 
or for all intents and purposes, AFAB non-binary. This isn't bad, but I'm not gonna lie, thinking about this now kind of bums me out because despite the fact that gems are aliens and they are non-binary, their concept of gender goes beyond what we know, making it so there's no assigned male birth non-binary gems at all kind of stinks. I guess this was the mid-2010s and gender theory hadn't evolved into what it has now, but not everyone asking about this necessarily wants a dude bro or typical hero to be a gem. Sometimes people just want a hero to be something different. This falls into the criticism of how people perceive non-binary as a third gender and how people associate being non-binary with people who are AFAB and present in some androgynous way. I know making this differentiation and focusing on it in of itself defeats the purpose of non-binary being a spectrum, but that's kind of the point. Most of the non-binary people I know, maybe my friends who are NB are rad people obviously, but they're mostly AFAB. And when you see someone that is non-binary, most people associate it with someone who is AFAB or has some typical presentation of androgyny, something that they're used to instead of just embracing that non-binary people can look however they want. Again, presenting as the quote-unquote normal way for a non-binary person to exist isn't bad. It's the fact that people consider that as a norm is bad. And that's kind of what makes me bummed about how the gems are treated as non-binary. Of course, each of them has a different relationship to the concept of femininity, at least how humans see it, but it took us until future to have someone who has a masked voice, and that was Ian e JQ voicing Snowflake Obsidian. It also took in the future to have an actual non-binary human with Shep, and Shep just exists, and I'm glad for that. It's important to show that non-binary people are literal human people. I know the alien metaphor might make it easier for younger people to understand, and it might make it easier to get past the censors and other territories, but again, these people exist, and Shep is a step in the right direction. Despite me not personally feeling represented, I know many other people are, and that's good, especially for non-binary people of color. You could conceptually say something similar for Stevani, but Stevani still represents, at least in my eyes, a femme-leading androgynous person. Also, they exist as a fusion. They're literally just two people. Two kids. It's at least kind of cool that people think they look nice regardless of the gender, but they're still kids. They're a literal representation of a relationship between Steven and Connie, but they aren't a replacement for an actual non-binary person. And being non-binary means something different to different people. As far as we see them, both Steven and Connie are cis, or otherwise not doing much to present in any gender non-conforming ways, at least I picked up on. I know there was a time where Steven uh, dressed in a dress <laughs> uh, to help Sadie out for that concert episode, but that's all I can think of. It's still a nice gesture, and it still serves as an introduction to the concept of being non-binary, but it's not a replacement for an actual non-binary character. And again, it sucks that we had to wait until the future for us to get actual non-binary rep, but Shep is just a human. Who exist? Shep is cool. I wish you saw more of them, but I love how they're handled. They just exist. No big fuss about the pronouns, the vocab, just calling them Sadie's partner. It, it's nice. And of course, bones him being a person of color. I just honestly wish we had more overt representation like this. Steven Universe as a show never ventured far outside Beach City, and as a result, everything was kind of fixed into a couple spots. As previously said, most non-binary characters weren't even human, and all presented varying degrees of female, which ended up causing some confusion as to what non-binary meant. It might not have been the intent or even overt, but this is what happened, and this is how I see it. Just because someone is non-binary doesn't mean they won't look human, and I think that's the real thing that ends up being missed when you make non-binary characters aliens. Non-binary can look just like you or me, because we are just like you, just in a different way. And to close out and talk about other shows, while I love Kipo almost as much as Man of a Thousand Thoughts, I almost completely forgot Kipo even had non-binary rep of Asher. 
They exist. I'm glad they're there, but they're barely there. And Angel from Craig of the Creek is, in many respects, good representation. I haven't seen nearly as much of Craig of the Creek as I probably should, but the fact that Angel isn't the only non-binary character to exist in the show is good in itself. And despite not seeing the episode with them in a long time, I still immediately remember who they are and what purpose that they actually serve. For all intents and purposes, Angel is the one that manages the Creek's daycare, so younger siblings are, well, taken care of. Their first appearance also introduced who they are and the importance of pronouns. And I could say something about it feeling a bit heavy-handed and condescending, but at the same time, this is a kid's cartoon, and I'm glad there is something to actually help people understand this. What I like, though, is that I was able to find that Angel gets to be a character after this. They live in the creek just like everyone else. They get to do kid things. While writing this, I was able to see them in an episode where they ended up competing in a cooking contest. And you get an idea as to how seriously they take competing, a bit of their home life, and the fact that they know how to improvise to make the best out of the situation when creating a new snack food. To sum up my feelings, non-binary rep still has a way to go. There's no one way to be non-binary, and I would love characters to explore different relationships to gender than we're used to. Have someone change pronouns over the course of a story, and have the supporting characters be perfectly okay with it. Non-binary people shouldn't exclusively be represented with AFAB people or non-humans because it reintroduces the distinction of gender roles that we're trying to do away with. People can present however they please, and it's important to show that there's no one way a non-binary person is supposed to look, act, or sound. But having people who are assigned male at birth or simply present more masculine would be a breath of fresh air. Also, goes without saying, having actual non-binary people represent these characters and voice them would be good. Again, plus a point for Angel, but we can do more. Also, again, more overt human representation. Metaphors are great and sometimes they can't be avoided, but having human characters just be non-binary is great. Don't let them be defined by being non-binary, but don't let them have to hide it either. Being non-binary is a part of many people's identities. That's not all we have to offer. It's just why we're human. Again, it's not mine nor any cis person's place to say if a non-binary character is decent rep or not. But I think we can all agree that there should be more of them with a larger variety shown. They should have an active role in the stories they're in and not just hang out in the background for diversity points. And I want to thank all my non-binary guests for lending their voices and letting us all learn and hear from them. Because no one is a monolith for their identity, it's good to hear from multiple people of an identity. 